Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be actually the, the only one up here to be talking about a, an innovation that we've brought over the finish line. Um, I think you've all seen forward-looking statements, so we'll get straight to the big-time innovation. Um, first, I, I thought this might be a bit of hyperbole with it being a 50-year-old molecule that we're talking about. But in fact, what we've been able to do with Extensa is something that is truly extraordinary and, and very rare, much, much rarer than new molecules or new mechanisms of action. Uh, Dextenza is an entirely new route of administration. When you think of how rare new routes of administration are to be approved, uh, think back at some of the, uh, the, the, the times in history when, when these things have happened, like suppositories, which change the way French treat themselves, to transdermals, to uh, actually uh, inhaled devices, which deliver drugs directly to the lung, which takes molecules that are essentially uh, useless when given systemically, but become life-saving when it's delivered directly to the, young, to, to the lung. So the fact that we've invented a new route of administration and brought it through to approval is truly, uh, I think in my, my view, big-time innovation. So what is Dextenza? Dextenza is a fully resorbable um, hydrogel uh, um, depot that contains dexamethasone. You can see on the, uh, the, 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 the visuals here the insertion of, a, uh, of Dextenza into the canaliculus. This is something that is well within the skill set of both ODs and MDs. Uh, and what you're seeing here is essentially a full course of post-surgical st therapy for a, uh, a steroid in a post-cataract environment. Um, that replaces what you see on the other side, which is drop therapy, um, 70 drops with a complicated pathology for over a month of treatment. So truly an innovation. <clears throat> now the question is, does it work? Yes, clearly it works. This is the, uh, the pooled phase three data um, with the, uh, the classic endpoints of absence of pain at day eight and absence of anterior chamber cells at day 14, all very highly statistically significant. It works the way you would you would expect a steroid to work under clinical conditions. It works the way you expect a steroid to work actually in real life, in real, real life outcomes, which is the difference that we truly make in, in this environment. Um, looking at the adverse event profile on the right, you see a drug that is very well tolerated. The reason why you give steroids post-surgically is to get rid of problems, not to create new ones, and certainly the uh, Dextenza is, uh, has a very clear side effect profile on that side. Um, it also has the ability, it's good for patients but, and, and also physicians, but it also has the ability to, uh, to create new reimbursement pathways. Um, those of you who do cataract surgery will be aware of the current modality, which is really essentially you, you do the cataract surgery, there's a CPT code for the cataract surgery, the facility in which you do it also takes a facility fee on top of that, it's about $1,500 in total. Um, with Dextenza and with, a, with another entrant on the market as well, it is a buy and bill product so when in the, whoever buys the product in is able to take a margin on that product as well. So that, that creates another income stream in the environment. But what's truly unique about Dextenza in the anterior portion of the eye is it's also associated with its own procedure code. And that procedure code is a, is a billable opportunity for both the physician and the ASC, or the hospital depending on, on, on where it's done. And this is currently a category three code. It's called 0356T. And one of the things we have to do when we get out there is make sure the doctors begin coding for that and make sure that payers understand that CPT code and what the appropriate payment level for that CPT code should be. Um, where are we now with it? Uh, we are, have, since April 29th, our field force is out there. We have a uh, reimbursement specialist. We have key account managers. Um, we are sampling, currently sampling the product. Uh, the reimbursement and coding, uh, some of you might have noticed that, that we had, uh, we released last week or this week that the, uh, the CMS in their, uh, their, their, uh, has recommended as a preliminary recommendation for HICPIC's unique uh, uh, J code for the product, which we expect to be able to um, confirm in November and then have available on the uh, January of 2020. Uh, in the meantime, we filed for a C code with pass-through payment status, which we would expect sometime in July. So we really expect in July where the, the, the sales for the product really start to be ramping up. Um, at the same time, we're planning for the longer life cycle, life cycle program. We have an, an active IIT program. Um, we also have a, filed an SNDA with a PDUFA date in November, which should extend the label from post-surgical pain to the prevention of post-surgical inflammation as well. Um, and also, we believe we're one trial away from an indication in allergic conjunctivitis. As I mentioned before, the insertion of this product is well within the skill set of, of both MDs and ODs and can be given in an office environment. 
Uh, so having an office-based indication becomes very important to us, especially with the J code, which we expect to have in January of 2020. Um, we're not just Extensa, but it's just the, uh, the, the, the product that obviously we're, we're focused on at the moment because we're in launch mode. As you can see, we have uh, a full pipeline, also a number of products below this line that we've actually formulated and are in preclinical testing but haven't yet formally brought into our pipeline. Uh, one product in phase three, two products in phase one, and a, a preclinical collaboration that we have with, uh, with, uh, um, with Regeneron. Um, as I mentioned before, we've invented a new uh, form of a new route of administration. From that route of administration, our intention is to fully make drop therapies obsolete. Uh, I think our brothers at Maddie have realized as well that canaliculus is an awfully good place from which to deliver drug to the surface of the eye. It's incumbent upon all of the companies that start to use this territory to deliver drug to the surface of the eye to really get past the modality of drops. And nowhere is it more important to get past the modality of drops than it is in glaucoma where routinely when you talk to, uh, to physicians about what is the largest challenge in glaucoma, it's not about new chemical entities, it's about the, uh, the, the non-compliance of patients on drop therapy. We have two approaches. The first I've, I've clicked up is in, <clears throat> is in phase three. We're actually a, a couple of weeks away from closing the uh, um, sealing the, 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 the data lock to be able to actually present the, uh, the results of our first phase three pivotal for OTXTP. Um, we also have a, an intracameral administration, which is uh, in the front of the eye, which is more invasive but longer acting and, uh, and, and also uh, uh, potentially more, uh, um, <clears throat> more, more powerful than the, in, the intracanalicular approach. Um, in the back of the eye, we also plan to make immediate release injections to the back of the eye obsolete. We have two programs with this. The first is a collaboration with Regeneron, which is with their VEGF, uh, uh, um, VEGF product ILEA. The second is our own, which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Those of you who know tyrosine kinase inhibitors, they act upstream of VEGF. Uh, and we can deliver that because it's a small molecule and very potent. We can deliver that just in a rod. We don't need to actually have it change shape in order to stay out of the visual, visual axis. And that brings us back to the big time innovation about 30 seconds later. I apologize for using a bit more time. Thank you. Thank you.